So what we have here is that y of n is equal to x of n convolved with h of n, or y of n is equal to the summation from k equal negative infinity to infinity of u of k, u of n minus k. So first, if we make a sketch of u of k, we know that it's zero up to time zero, and then it's ones. Then, if we make a sketch of u of n minus k, we know that it starts at n, and it is one for all values less than n. So when we examine these two plots, what we see here is that if we want to multiply these together, the only time we're going to get non-zero values is when n is greater than zero. So this changes our limits of integration to be k equals zero to n. And at that point, the overlap is one for u of k and one for u of n minus k. So we'll see here that, for example, if n was equal to 1, then the summation would be a 2. If n was equal to 2, the summation would be 3, and so on. So the result of this is that y of n is equal to n plus 1. But we know this is only valid for n greater than or equal to 0. So this is u of n. And that is used to show that this is only valid if n is greater than or equal to zero. In class activity two, the input to a system is x of n is equal to a to the n u of n, and the unit impulse response of the system is h of n equals u of n. Use the convolution sum to determine the output of the system y of n, assuming that the magnitude of a is less than one. So once again, y of n is equal to x of n convolved with h of n, or y of n is equal to the summation from k equal negative infinity to infinity, x of k, h of n minus k, which is equal to the summation, k equal negative infinity to infinity, a to the k, u of k, u of n minus k. So now let's make a sketch again. Here is the sketch of x of k equals a to the k u of k. So we have zeros up to times zero. And at zero, a to the zero is a one. Then we have one, two, three, and so on. So at one, we have a at two, we have a squared. At three, we have a cubed. So now let's make a sketch of u of n minus k. We'll put it at a different spot this time so you can see how it shifts. So h of n minus k equals u of n minus k. So let's put it right here. So the leading edge is n. All of these have an amplitude of one all the way to negative infinity. So once again, we see that this limits our summation limits because we only get a non-zero value when n is greater than zero. So this is the summation from k equals zero to n, a to the k times one times one, or the summation k equals zero to n a to the k, which equals, from our math facts at the top of the page, 1 minus a to the k plus 1 over 1 minus a. Once again, this is only valid for n greater than or equal to 0. So we multiply this by u of n. In class activity 3, 
The input to a system is x of n is equal to alpha to the n plus 2, u of n plus 2, and the unit impulse response of the system is h of n equals beta to the n minus 1. Use the convolution sum to determine the output of the system y of n. We will assume that alpha over beta is less than 1. So y of n is equal to the summation from k equal negative infinity to infinity, x of k, h of n minus k, which equals the summation from k equal negative infinity to infinity of alpha to the k plus 2, u of k plus 2, times beta to the n minus k minus 1, u of n minus k minus 1. So let's make a sketch again. First, we will sketch x of k. And since this is u of k plus 2, this is actually 0 up until negative 2. And then we have lollipops here. The first one is 1. The next one is alpha, alpha squared, alpha cubed, and so on. Next, let's sketch h of n minus k. h of n minus k has a leading edge of n minus 1. So I'll put it here, just so they don't overlap so it's clear what I'm doing here. And once again, we have a 1, a beta, beta squared, and so on. So what you should see here is that we will only have overlap when n minus 1 is greater than negative 2. So our summation is going to be from k equal negative 2 to n minus 1, alpha to the k plus 2, beta to the n minus k minus 1. So now we're going to do some rearranging and we're going to pull some terms out. So I'm going to try to rearrange this so that I have alpha to the k and beta to the negative k. So to do that, what I'm going to pull out is an alpha squared And I'm going to pull out a beta to the n minus 1. So next, in order to change the limits on the summation, we're going to do a substitution. So we're going to let L equal k plus 2, which means that k is equal to L minus 2. So now y of n is equal to the summation, if we put k equal negative 2 in here, from L equals 0. And if we put k equal n minus 1 in here, we get L equal to n plus 1. So the limit is from 0 to n plus 1. And so alpha to the k plus 2 becomes alpha to the L. And beta to the n minus k minus 1 becomes beta to the n minus the quantity L minus 2 minus 1, which becomes beta to the n minus L plus 1. So now we want to try to get the same exponent for the alpha and the beta, so we're going to pull some terms out of the summation. And what we're going to pull out of the summation is beta to the n plus 1. So the summation is k equals 0 to n plus 1, alpha to the L, beta to the negative L. So now we can write this as y of n is equal to beta to the n plus 1, the summation from k equals 0 to n plus 1, alpha over beta raised to the L. So now this looks very similar to one of our math facts, except we do have a constant in the front. So we can write beta to the n plus 1. And 
the limit goes, the summation goes to n plus 1 instead of n. So what we will have here is 1 minus alpha over beta. And instead of n plus 1, we have n plus 2 here divided by 1 minus alpha over beta. And we know this is valid because we have assumed that alpha over beta is less than 1. And now this is only true when n plus 1 is greater than 0. So the way we show n plus 1 is greater than 0 is the same as n plus 1 greater than negative 1. So we multiply this by u of n plus 1. 